All right, good evening, everybody. So after the last few videos regarding the relays on the Serbo, I've had several questions regarding how do you get relays to run on a Raspberry Pi running the Venus OS? So we're gonna take a look at that tonight. I've done it in the past, and so I'm gonna walk you through a few steps of how I used a relay on a Raspberry Pi running Venus OS. So let's get started. So in case you didn't know, you can install the Venus operating system on certain versions of the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pis are basically like little microcomputers. You can install that operating system on the Raspberry Pi, and then you will have basically your own Serbo device at a much cheaper cost but it requires a little bit of work on your side. And there's a few shortcomings. You know, you don't have built-in relays. You don't have built-in spots for tank sensors and inputs. So you have to do some conversions and add your own hardware in order to make certain pieces work. But for a basic open source servo, really, the Raspberry Pi does work very, very well. And honestly, in order to get some relays on the Raspberry Pi, it's not all that much work. And I'm gonna show you how I did this in the past when I first got started with a 12 volt system. So taking a look at the Pi real quickly, this is a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. And this is version 1.1. This is actually from 2014. So this is not new at all. And the Raspberry Pis have this 40 pin header across the top. And this header is what you're gonna end up using to actually wire in an external relay. And I know there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can probably get some relays that you can mount directly to this header. But because I didn't know at the time what pins were needed for the relay control, I ended up buying this feather wing non-latching relay. And you can see right here, the maximum voltage is 220 volts DC, 250 volts AC, max current of two amps. And if we look at this, it's very simple. This is actually, I think it was $8. I only needed three pins for this entire relay. So I didn't really need to, to do all this stuff. It does require a little bit of soldering. So if you're, you know, not that good at it, maybe buy a second one, <laughs> you know, get some practice in. But I only soldered in these three pins. And honestly, I can't remember if I had to solder in this terminal block or not. I might have had to, but six pins maximum is what I ended up having to do. So you run your three pins over to your specific spots on your header. And then you run your wire, your power wire that you want to break in through your normally closed or normally open, and then your common port, depending on what you're trying to wire up. So looking at the computer real quick. So I got that relay from Adafruit. And again, $8. I mean, for a, a small PCB, but we can see in a, a better picture here, we've got our three volt pin here that we had to add. We had to add our ground pin and then our signal pin right here. But I didn't know on the Raspberry Pi which pins were being used for triggering the relay from the Venus OS. And I came across our good old friend, Kevin Windrum. He has a GPIO package on GitHub for adding multiple relays to your Venus OS. And so I ended up digging into all his information and I ended up looking for the pin out and I found it under file sets and then scroll down to GPIO list. And then in here, he lists out the different relays. The Raspberry Pi can have up to six relays. Now the Serbo only has two, but even in the case of the Serbo, relay one is the only one that can do the advanced style features that we saw. The generator start, stop, the temperature, the manual, 
Uh, there was, I think, at least one more. I think there were five different options, but Relay 1 is the only one that can do that. Relay 2 through Relay 6 on the Raspberry Pi are only manual toggle switches that you trigger. So if you needed more than one, we would have to add this package and then utilize the proper pins. Now, we look here and we see Relay 1, GPIO 21 header pin 40. Well, what does that mean? And in my case, I have a Raspberry Pi 2B. So I ended up just coming to Google and I typed in Raspberry Pi 2B GPIO pinout. And the very first link opened up and you can see we've got a picture here of the header across the top, the 40 pin header, and it shows you the numerical identification for pin one and then two, and then it goes three and four and so on all the way down to pin 39 and 40. So if we look at our GPIO package, we want to find header pin 40. And this is, it's, it's basically the signal pin. And header pin 40 happens to be right here. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we've got an actual diagram of the specific pins. So we can see here, header pin one, two, three, four, all the way down to pin 40. If we look back over here at this non-latching relay, we needed three pins. We needed the signal, we needed the ground, and we needed the power. So we need a ground pin to connect over to this header on the Raspberry Pi. And so I ended up purchasing a package of DuPont wires, and these are female to female. And so I just grabbed three different colors, green for ground, red for power, and white for my signal wire. So we're gonna start with the ground, and we're gonna end up just sliding this connection right on our ground pin on the feather wing. And looking back over at the diagram in our browser, remember I said that, that relay one was pin 40. So pin 40 is down here on the bottom. So I wanna utilize this ground that's right next to it. So pin 39. So we're gonna take our other ground connection and pin 40, is this pin right here. So pin 39 is gonna be that one right next to it. So we're gonna take our ground line, slide it all the way down, and there is our ground connection. Let's do our signal wire next. So our signal pin on the feather wing is right here. We'll take our white wire and slide it on that pin. Header pin 40 is the one right next to our ground connection, which just makes it very easy to find. So we will slide it right down on top of that pin number 40 and push it all the way down, make it nice and snug. So we've got our two of our three connections done already. Like I said, very simple, very easy. And now we need a three volt connection from the Raspberry Pi to this three volt pin so I will put our red cable, a red line on our three volt pin on the feather wing. And we're gonna come back over here and look at our diagram again. And we're gonna look for a three volt connector. We see we've got one up here on pin number one. We've got one here on pin number 17. So we could use either of those. And honestly, pin number one is a whole lot easier to find than having to count down to pin number 17. So we are going to put our red connection on pin number one. And that is it from the wiring standpoint. And then you would feed your line into here based on if you needed the normally closed or normally open relay. So now let's power this thing up and see if it works. So our Pi is booted. We've got our Venus OS remote console up on the computer. And this is a blank slate. There's nothing special installed, nothing set up at all. It is from a fresh installation. It's a little different in my case because this has been configured for the VRM once already. So it's already attempting to send data to the VRM. So I just have to come in and make a couple quick changes specifically for the VRM. So I need to change the logging interval up to one minute. And then in order to have 
the VRM be able to control the relays on the servo, I need to enable VRM two-way communication. And that'll allow us to have the switches in the VRM control the relay. But aside from that, everything is, is default. So we're gonna come all the way down to the relay section. And we see the function is set to alarm only. We wanna set that to manual right now. We've got our, our relay all wired up. So if we come down to this relay on and turn it on, we should see a light turn on on the relay and hear a click. And there we go. And I can turn it off, on, off, on, off. And if we switch over to the VRM, we've got our little controls toggle in the top right hand corner. And again, we see relay one. Press it once to, and confirm, the relay turns on, press it again, confirm, and it turns the relay off. So we've got one relay configured just in the stock installation of the Venus OS on the Raspberry Pi. But what happens if we want more? Well, we can thank Kevin Windrum for having some additional enhancements, which give us the ability to control more relays on the Raspberry Pi. And in fact, we can control up to six and if you want to control all six relays, you have to install two of his, well, you really have to install three of his packages. You have to install the setup helper, the GUI mods package, which we also installed in a previous video, but also there's a GPIO package that we need to install as well. And the GPIO package gives the actual functionality for those additional relays. Otherwise, I believe it's, there's GUI changes which show you the switches, but you don't actually have the underlying configuration for those relays. So because we've already done the setup helper and the GUI mods installations in a previous video, I'll link to that video here, but I'm not gonna go through any of that right now. But what I do wanna show you is how you install the GPIO package that Kevin provides to give you that additional relay functionality. So we can see the setup helper and the GUI mods has already been installed. So we're gonna, in the package manager area of the settings, we're gonna come down to inactive packages. And you can see all the different packages that Kevin has worked on. External transfer, shutdown monitor, BE can, Raspberry Pi display, and GPIO setup. So we wanna come down to do the GPIO setup and add that. Go back and up to active packages. And we can see GitHub version is 4.1. We don't have anything stored or installed for the GPIO setup. So we'll enter into this, go down to download. And then we need to go up to proceed and it'll download it. Now we go over to install and it asks us again to proceed and then it requires a reboot. So I'll just reboot that now. And our Raspberry Pi is back up. We'll come into settings, go down to the relay section again. And now we have six different relay options. So we've already shown you how relay one works. What if we wanted to switch to relay two? Well, if we look at Kevin's files here, Relay two is header pin 11. So now we wanna find header pin 11 on our header document, which is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six from the top. It's five away from our three volt power. So using our example that we have here, I would not recommend doing this live. I would power down the Pi usually, but our white line is our signal line. And right now it's hooked up to relay one. Well, if we wanted to change that to relay two, we need to move this to one, two, three, four, five, six. And back to our remote console, we go down to relay two, turn it on and off, on, off. And then you just do that for your subsequent relays that you want to use. And looking at our VRM, we can see relay one and relay two. Now, the one thing that I don't know is if relays three through six actually show up in the VRM. 
what obviously relays one and two do. Even if, re even if relays three through six do not show up here in the VRM, you still can come to the remote console in the VRM and enable them from here. And then you can also have your relay overview dashboard, relays one through six, which you can turn on and off. And so with utilizing Relay 1 and Relay 2, you can wire up exactly like we did with the servo and wire up your generator or your AC in control. And then your Relay 2 could control your AC in charging. So I hope it helps a little bit. Uh, I know that there's probably a lot of people out there that have the Raspberry Pi instead of the servo just from you know, the fact that it's a whole lot cheaper, but it does require a little bit of extra work when it comes to you know, some of these customizations. And so that's where you're really, you, you have to weigh the cost. You know, the servo has got stuff pre-wired and pre-configured. It's already got the relays. It's already got the different connections uh, built into it. The Raspberry Pi, well, you've got to look at little converters for VE CAN, VE bus, VE direct. You've got to look at these additional relay boards if you want to use those as well. So it's up to you whatever you decide to go with. But I wanted to share how I have done this in the past with setting up these little relays on the Raspberry Pi. Again, if you've got other relays that you've used with your Venus OS installation, please, by all means, share them. Uh, I'd be very interested to know if anybody's used, you know, a, a relay hat that a relay hat is just something that's going to slide on top of that that 40 pin uh, connector on the top and it's just going to lock in on top so you don't have to worry about these little wires going from a relay board into your raspberry pi but again if you're not afraid of a little bit of soldering and what eight bucks for the relay take a look i mean if it can help you awesome I'll try to link to everything down in the description with all the little pieces that I've used, you know, the um, DuPont wires that I had and then the feather wing from Adafruit and the different packages from Kevin Windrum. Again, thank you, Kevin, for, you know, helping out the community and building these packages and these little automation pieces to further our Venus OS configurations. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.